disappearing inside millions of children. Tomorrow, millions more lunches. What makes all the food that you're going to put away during your life? Don't tell me that a farmer makes that carrot. He can grow it, but he can't make the food that's in it. A carrot is the root of a plant, and only a carrot plant can... The only thing in the wide world that can make a stalk of celery. Lettuce is a plant's leaf. The bread, of course, made from the seeds of the wheat plant. Ah, but what about the meat in the sandwich? That comes from an animal. Yes, but all animals get from plants, or from other animals that get their food from plants. If there were no plants, you couldn't swing your arms, or hang from a bar, or walk home from school, because you wouldn't be alive. That's something to think about the next time you take a swing at a scraggly little weed. Did you know that weeds make food? Even a weed is a food factor. The most wonderful factory that man has ever built, half as wonderful as this small. A weed may not make food that you like to eat, but it makes food just the same. If we look at a drawing, we can see how this free works. The pieces of equipment for making food are the roots, the stems, and the leaves. Each does its part. Out of all in the world, it's three things is something in the air, it uses water. You'd starve if you had to eat these things, but a plant can make all its food to live and grow from only air, water, and minerals. Perhaps you've done the experiment in class where you plant seeds in a jar and keep them wet with blotting paper. If you some radish seeds, something about the way Put the jar aside for three or four days to let the plants grow. If you could speed up the plant's growth, it would look like this. As the root goes down, hundreds of root hairs grow out from it. These root hairs reach out and get water and minerals from the soil. Of course, you won't actually be able to see the root grow, but if you look closely with a magnifying glass, you can see how many and how tiny the root hairs are. If we look at a drawing again, you can see how the roots do their job. Here is a very large picture of just one root hair. The walls of the root hair are very thin and are made so water and minerals can pass through. Water soaks into the ground and dissolves the minerals. The water and minerals are first absorbed by the root hair, then pass into tubes at the center of the root. Here they begin their journey up out of the ground. They flow up through the larger roots, through tubes in the stems, and finally into the leaves. You can find the tubes in a stalk of celery easily. Can you see them here? There is an experiment that you may want to do to show that the tubes carry water and minerals. Let the celery stand in some red ink. If you could speed up the way the ink goes into the tubes, the celery would get red like this. Actually, it takes two or three hours for this much ink to get up into the stalk. The ink goes on up in the leaves. In a leaf, the tubes are called veins. The veins in leaves make wonderful designs. Hold some leaves up to the light and you can see. 
the veins branch out and become smaller and smaller until the water and minerals are carried to every bit of the leaf. Now the water and minerals are in the leaves. But you remember that in order to make food, the plant also needs something from the air. This something is a gas called carbon dioxide. If you had a microscope and could look at a piece of a leaf much, much smaller than the head of a pin, you would see something like this. Each leaf has thousands of tiny openings which let in the carbon dioxide. Now the leaf has all of the materials it needs. It has carbon dioxide from the air and water and minerals from the ground. What happens now? How are these materials made into food? No one knows exactly how it happens, but we do know about one of the things that a leaf uses in making food. It's the part of the leaf that makes it green, the part called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the machinery that makes the food. There is still one more thing that a plant needs. Sunlight. Sunlight is the power that runs this wonderful machinery. Every day all over the earth, chlorophyll and sunlight work together. They work to turn water and carbon dioxide into food. And what about minerals? Plants use minerals in many other ways, but some of the minerals go into the food making too. Do you suppose that leaves do their work in the dark at night? No. Only when there is light can leaves make food. Of course, many plants don't store food in a way that you and I like. You probably wouldn't be very happy grazing in a pasture. But think of all the foods that you and I love. One kind of food that plants make is sugar. It's sugar that makes an orange sweet. And here is the root of a sugar beet. Much of the sugar that we eat comes from this sweet tasting root. Another kind of food is starch. Starch is stored in grain and many other plants. Some plants, such as peas and beans, store a kind of food called protein. Some food is stored as oil and fat. You can actually feel the oiliness of peanuts. And of course, you know that all plants provide us with the vitamins and minerals we need to be healthy and to grow properly. Sugar, Starch, protein, fat, vitamins and minerals. All of this food, all of the food in the world comes from water and carbon dioxide and minerals, from the work of chlorophyll and the good light of the sun. From these things, each plant makes the food that helps it to live and grow. And this food makes it possible for all the animals in the world to live and grow. Each fat caterpillar eating, eating. Each bright-eyed, hungry little rat. Each animal on the farm. In one way or another, food for every animal comes from plants. The big-eyed owl may eat the mouse that eats the cheese, that comes from milk, that is made from the grass that the cow eats. Always at the beginning of the chain, some animal gets its food from plants. Green plants make the food of the world, foods that you love, strong and healthy, and help you live.